Yes, we're <laughs> good to have you back, Martijn, on another fight talk. UFC Thank 291. You. Did you see everything? Yes, I just I saw the main event. It was amazing. Jeez, it it was insane. It was insane. But first, how are you doing? You had a rough weekend, is from what I've heard. Um, I was in uh, Jakarta. Indonesia, I had to do some courses there, giving uh, kickboxing cl uh, classes to um, personal trainers from um, uh, Celebrity Fitness and Fitness First Asia. So uh, together with Anthony Engler, a and, and former student of mine and also a uh, former US, uh, one championship fighter, we, did, uh, we trained 90 personal trainers in the last week. And I went back to, uh, to Holland. And uh, they canceled my flight, so that was a little bit of a hassle. I had to go back to <laughs> in the middle of the night, by the way. At 5 o'clock, they decided the plane not to, uh, not to leave because of some tech technical issues. I had to go back and uh, catch a plane the next, the next day. So, uh, but eventually, uh, here we are. You We're made back. it home safely. You made it home safe. That's the mo most important thing, right? But you trained 90 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a tough, uh, tough tough thing to do for eight hours a week uh sorry eight hours a day and mm -hmm. uh yeah so that was um that's always challenging but um they did well so i'm happy how do they qualify because i saw something on uh on on social media how do can i go to jakarta and uh, let me qualify as a trainer or how does it work so this these are already personal trainers from uh evolution wellness which is a big uh company uh, with more than, I think it's now it's more than 200 schools under their uh, 200, yeah, like gyms under their umbrella. And uh, they will get like a basic personal training uh, course from uh, in regards to everything reg related to personal training. And then they get specific courses as well. Uh, and one of them is a kickboxing trainer where they learn how to um, do a nice workout, um, a kickboxing related warm up, some basic techniques and then some um, a kickboxing workout. And it can be uh, it can be anything, but everything related, related to kickboxing, how to hold pads, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I get a basic understanding of what kickboxing is. Not for uh, people to become world champion or for uh, the die hard uh, uh, fighters. But um, more for uh, everyday people who would like to get a good workout uh, related to kickboxing. Well, nice job to have, right? Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so you didn't uh, watch the whole card uh, that played last night. Yeah, what's the what's the main event? Like, uh, what is it? Like five or six fights? So amazing. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah um, I was kind of disappointed that uh, Wonder Boy got cancelled. Yeah. It was like three pounds over his opponent, right? So yeah, it was it was uh, quite a bit, and he also made a statement on social media where he said, um, "I'm 40 years old. I'm not gonna put my um, my, pos my my potential title fight on the line because some guy doesn't uh, is not disciplined enough to make weight." Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think he's right. I think he's right. For the fans, it's not nice, but. Yeah, I understand. I think he's right. He shouldn't do that. He's like, uh, yeah, like I said, he's forty years old, and uh, like this one and a half kilo on f on on the day of the weigh-in, there's going to be a lot more kilos on the day of the fight. So exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. At that level, everybody should be professional enough to 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 make their weight, especially if you want to play that game. Next day, I'm so much kilo, uh, so many kilos heavier, um, and that gives me an advantage. Yeah, also make sure that you make the weight then on the day of the weigh, and so be professional enough to do that. So, and otherwise, fight a weight class, weight class heavier, just like Pereira did. But uh, yeah, or just make the weight. Exactly. Yeah. I don't yeah. get it. So I, don't, I don't like it either. No, you're a professional. It's your job. You had one job. Yeah. <laughs> it's to make weight. All right. Um, well, the first fight, let's see if it was oh, not the main card. Oh, yeah, it was Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Holland. Did you see that one? Sorry, I didn't see that one. How was it? Was it good? Well, I don't exactly know what Michael Chiesa was doing in that octagon. 
um, it was done in like two minutes and Kevin Holland really dominated uh, him in the octagon. Um, he was way faster, stronger, also a lot uh, taller than Michael Chiesa is. So I don't know why they made that matchup because to me it didn't make any sense. Did you have uh, no chance? No, not at all. Not at all. Kevin Holland, it was a walk in the park. I think okay. he could have fought another fight after this fight. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's too, <laughs> it's like years, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm curious where it will end for Kevin Holland because he's only 30. That's in, in fighting. That's really young, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I like him as a fighter. He's, he's entertaining as well. Um, yeah. He's a funny guy, and. Um, yeah, he, he, I, I believe he said in the in the post interview with Joe Rogan, he said that he might want it to move up again because okay. he dropped he dropped uh, a weight class. Yeah. So um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So did you see Tony Ferguson? Yeah, yeah. What do you like, think? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Maybe I don't. So I didn't see the fight with Kevin Holland. This is a different fight, uh, I guess. But still, uh, Bobby Green was so dominant, you know. Um, I give it up for Tony Ferguson for being so tough. He was so tough. He just, it's unbelievable how much, how much punches and damage that guy could, can, can, can take and just keep moving forward. Just keep punching the guy and it keeps moving forward. I mean, like he's so, and he comes from strange angles, right? So I see sometimes guys copying him. But not everybody can do that. It's like one of a kind, you know, is his strange way of, uh, of fighting. Uh, and he can take so much punishment, punishment you know. It's amazing. Um, I don't think it's good for the long term, but uh, for fans, it's nice to watch because the guy just don't give up. Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, in terms of um, the fight itself, Bobby Green was so dominating, you know. So strong, hard punches, very expensive. Very explosive, very hard. Uh, that being said, yeah, Tony Ferguson kept moving forward. So, yeah, I think he also was like, whoa, what's what's happening? You know, why is he not he feeling hurt or going down or whatever? But how he finished it, yeah, amazing, you know. Very strong uh, choke. Uh, His first I, submission in the UFC is yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give a shout out to Jeremy Horn. I don't know if you know Jeremy Horn. He was one of the legends. He fought in Holland before even in Ahoy mm -hmm. and uh, he had so many fights that guy so so technical on the ground as well and um, yeah I mean like uh, the guy is uh, right? sorry he trained Bobby Green right yeah I think he did yeah yeah I think yeah. that's what I heard from the uh, from the post fight or, or maybe back in the days even I think from back in the days I'm not sure for this camp but back in the days he trained him but uh, he, had, he had also like a, a great uh, arm triangle choke that was his thing as well back then but, um, yeah, I mean, so good, um, as well as uh, standing as on the ground, uh, very dominating, very hard punches, also ground and pound, you know. Uh, I thought he was, uh, he really came to do what he had to do. It was like an amazing fight. I like it, you know, very disciplined. He was talking during the fight. I didn't know, I don't know what he ex exactly uh, it was he said, but he was, he was up there and, uh, uh, usually, I don't like it when people are very low with the hands, but he was quick enough to avoid uh, any punches or kicks from Tony Ferguson. So, yeah, I um, it was very yeah. fast with the punches. Very fast, very very. Yeah, fast. I was yeah. I was really impressed by that um, because I I cannot remember the last time I saw Bobby Green fighting. So uh, um, yeah. yeah, I was uh, I was surprised by his appearance. What would uh, would you say that Tony should have done differently? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not sure. I mean, he's getting older as well, right? So what should have... Would he be able to beat Bobby Green that night? I'm not sure, you know. Uh, Bobby Green just too strong, too fast, uh, hard punches. I mean, like, if I was Tony Ferguson, for sure, uh, stay away from the hard right punch uh, uh, Bobby Green had. He hit him a couple of times as it was right there. Um Maybe try and take him down more, you know, because uh, although that's not easy with Bobby Green, he has a good takedown defense. 
Uh, he was trying to do things from the guard that was not very smart to do, you know, fighting from the guard against Bobby Green. He uh, suffered some damage there. Um, yeah, difficult, you know. At least stay out of the range, you know. Stay out of range, mm -hmm. get in, get out, get in, get out. Make sure he doesn't get, didn't get hit as much as he did. Yeah. Yeah, I also feel like uh, I believe Sander Strick, you know, from the commentary, said something like somebody um, close to Tony maybe should uh, tell him to stop. Yeah. And um, nobody in, in his close circle did it, uh, as of my knowledge. Um, but I think Dana White will, because I believe it's, it's sixth loss in a row. Yeah. He's still a tough fighter, you know. He's not a bad fighter. He's still a tough fighter, but, you know, he shouldn't take too much damage now at this age because uh, eventually this will be a problem for him in the future, you know. Um, yeah. You hear more and more fighters suffering from CTE, so that's something you don't want. And uh, because of his toughness, uh, he's a big uh, candidate for it. So, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think he he's, should... He's a legend already, you know. He did so many crazy fights. Yeah. He, yeah, he has nothing to prove anymore, I believe. No, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I think it for me personally, I would recommend him to to stop. But I, I never was up there, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it, like I, last time he fought Nate Diaz, was it Nate Diaz? Um, he I even guess. lost to Nate Diaz. Um, yeah, or even Chandler. I mean, it's he, he lost to some really good fighters, of course. So it's not yeah. embarrassing in the in 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 those uh, in that perspective. But yeah, I don't. It's think more the good. it's more the damage, you know. He's, uh -huh. uh, taken. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, the damage he has taken, but he's also not able anymore to. Well, some wins. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and and do some damage. I mean. Uh, today he sh should have been more dominant on the ground, and he well he was not. So, no. um, for everybody who is watching, by the way, let me know how you uh, experience this card. Uh, let me know if you have any questions for Martijn. Um, we will dive into some technical analysis later on. Uh, let's go on to the next fight. <laughs> I hope you have seen this one: Derek Lewis versus. The Lima? <laughs> His balls were hot again. <laughs> <laughs> what a character, huh? fight. What's that? I, it was his last fight. Did you know that? On contract. Yeah, yeah. He's a free, free agent now. Mm -hmm. So he didn't do so well for the last two years, he said. Um, and uh, yeah, he might as well pull off some bullshit, like he said, you know, <laughs> coming in with the jumping knee. Like, that was crazy. Full on the chin. Boom. And then yeah. uh, finishing it off. And uh, yeah, it's like, uh, I hope the UFC gives him another contract. I really hope so. I believe they will after this fight. Um, if not, hope he finds his way, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, somewhere else. I don't know what's going to happen with Bellator and PFL, if they're going to merge or not. I think that's something uh, they are talking about now. But um, he, he should definitely not stop fighting. He's yes, such a guy. Works. And he's so funny, you know. Yeah, he is. He's very yeah. entertaining. Very entertaining. I really like him. But Bellator versus uh, or, or the, the merge, Bellator PFL, is that in the works? I'm not sure if it's in the works. That's uh, that's what we hear on the streets. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I don't know. I have, I have no further knowledge about it uh, other than that they're talking about it. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I think that would be a wise decision. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to compete to UFC, I guess. So maybe... They have to join forces. Yeah, but yeah. Um, in general, do you think Derek Lewis is a good fighter? Yeah, he's a good fighter. I mean, he's, and he's entertaining as well, right? The, the, fact, <laughs> the fact that he says, I will never fight a title fight. I will never do a title fight. I don't care about the title because I can't fight five rounds. That's hilarious, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't care. He's so funny. I saw a whole interview of him with, uh, I think it was with Joe Rogan. The best. I... I he, like a real cool guy, you know, and especially seeing where he came from and uh, what he's doing now. And uh, he, he's still exciting. I mean, like, he can still knock people out, as you saw today, you know, or yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. And it and it was also very um convincing. Yeah. I mean like and if you come in with a flying knee like that, like and then and then finish him off. I mean, like he's he's always a force to reckon with. He's always a force. He hits so hard. He can do such crazy explosive things. I like him as a fighter. I, I'm a big fan. He's very strong, but when you take him to the ground, I believe was it Pavlovich or Ankalaev who did that the last time? Ankalaev? I don't think so. Ankalaev is like a light heavyweight, no? He's light heavyweight. Yes, some Russian. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but his last opponent took him to the ground, and then Derek Lewis has nothing to do uh, on the ground. He yeah, just has to. Not so good. I could imagine. So I could imagine, but uh, then he needs to train a little bit uh, more on his uh, takedown defense. But he's always exciting. So, and as, yeah. a, as a fighter and as a character, so I will never let him go if I was the UFC. No, exactly. Not after this. For, what? Not after this. Not after. No, this. exactly, exactly. I think he earned himself uh, a contract renewal, but um, yeah, some fighters you just have to have in in the competition. I think he's one of them. Um, what do you think of the Lima? I remember his last fight that he won, but I don't, I don't think of of him as a very entertaining fi a fighter. What do you think? I don't know. I honestly, I don't. I don't even know him, so I never saw him fight. Uh, well, maybe that says enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now let me check the Lima record. What his last fight was? I think it was a. Uh... Well, he's he's been in the UFC for a while. Oh yeah, he, Waldo Cortez Acosta. He won of him. I don't know. I don't know him to be honest. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so we'll see. I th I think they won't have a choice to not, um, to not renew renew his contract. Mm -hmm. um, the next fight, I, I was a bit disappointed um, to see this fight. Uh, Blavich, Bla or... Blavich versus Pereira. Yeah. Who do you? Who did you um, wanted to win up front? I don't know. I mean, like, Blahovic is a really good fighter. He's all round, Good striking, good ground. Nice takedowns as well. Uh, I would expect... I expected him to win because of uh, Pereira going one weight class up. Although Pereira is a really good fighter. I really respect him. I like his style. Good striking. Good takedown defense on the ground. We don't know so much about him, but... Um, he, I like his fighting style. He's training with Yusuri from Holland, of course. Um... Yeah, striker, like uh, we've seen him in glory. Um, I like him as a fighter, So, but Jan Blahovic, he's more all-round. He's really more a, an MMA fighter, although Pereira is catching up real quick. Um, did I think he, Pereira won the fight? No way, but that's my decision. That, that's my view on it. I'm sure there's a lot of other people who also believe it's... Uh, it wasn't uh, Pereira who um, should have won the fight. Should have won the fight, um, especially on Blachowicz. If I saw his uh, social media post, he was pretty pissed, um, and I uh, I would be pissed too if um, if I or my fighter lost like that. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. I mean, like um, he was very tired. I believe that many other people would be fight, uh, would be tired if they're fighting high altitude like that. And I, I saw on the social media that he was preparing in Poland in the mountains as well. Um, but still, yeah, it was just tired. He didn't get rocked. He didn't get hit hard. Uh, he, he, they didn't take. He was taking. He was taking him down like uh, at will and kept him there. And uh, also, he was not just laying still. Uh, he had to control him, so a little bit less punches than maybe we expected or we would have wanted to see. I don't think it was an exciting fight, but in my eyes, he did enough to win the fight. Um, yeah, I mean, three takedowns. And what was it, like five and a half minute ground control? That's yeah. more than one third of the fight. Exactly. Uh, one one yeah. whole round of ground control. 
yeah and then also uh and back mount even you know and really try really tried to finish the fight it was not like he was on the back mount and just holding on or he's really trying to get the submission but Pereira uh, on his defense is uh, yeah he was really good stopping the stopping the rear naked choke right chin in uh grabbing the arms and he, he did really well in defending but he had no chance in the first round um some punches i think also of course uh, Pereira looked stronger looked better better conditioning maybe uh, but also um uh, and Blachowicz, he was not completely um outstruck or something you know he also was he was still there and he also threw some punches although Pereira was uh, obviously better uh, but yeah he couldn't do any serious damage i believe so i think the decision was not really a good decision but that's my view no i i think it was my uh, personal view as well but um i don't know how that works in judges you obviously know that better than i do but um on 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 what can they have base that Pereira won the fight i mean he had some dangerous punches but it was not Blahovic was not in danger in general, right? No, I didn't think he was uh, close of being knocked out. I don't believe so. We didn't uh, see a lot of damage on his face as well, so I don't know. Maybe his appearance, his effort to control, effort to finish the fight, maybe that's mm -hmm. something they would say. But I would say that octagon control, you know, was was there with uh, with with Blahovic. I think he was more dominant. I think he was more controlling the fight. He was also trying to finish the fight yeah I, I i don't i don't get it no me neither and i also was a bit disappointed that blahovic was that tired i mean if he wasn't that tired i'm i'm sure he have won because um i just think like you said he's the better fighter in general do yeah. you think that uh, apart from the kickboxing skills from pejera do you think he can be a, a champion uh, he definitely has the potential. I mean, uh, he, he's a good fighter. Nothing to take away from him. I just think the decision was bad. I don't think uh, Pereira is a bad fighter. He's a very good fighter, very entertaining fighter. Actually, I was rooting, against, uh, re rooting for him in this fight against uh, Adesanya. Uh, I like him. He's very humble, uh, very strong striker, quick thing, very fast to the MMA game. Uh, and I still see him improving. So I, I believe he still has a big chance of being a champion one day. I really like him. He's a, yeah, I'm a big fan of his as well. Hmm. Interesting. Because <clears throat> some, <clears throat> sometimes even when he fought to Izzy, and maybe I'm a bit biased because I'm an Izzy fan, but um, even when he was fighting to Izzy and even today, I always have a feeling like, He's not really dominating the fights, but he has his lucky punch in his left hand. And mm, I'm... Yeah, if somebody's always pulling off the same punch, it doesn't mean it's a lucky punch, you know? <laughs> no, that's and, true. Uh, uh, he's not... I think he was, he was a really glory champion, right? You don't become a glory champion just with lucky punches. I believe he's really good. Uh, that's what I believe. Um, well, you're the expert, so... <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, like, uh, and many people say he's just a striker, but that's also not true anymore. You know, he's a good striker. He's obviously he's one of the best strikers of uh, the UFC, uh, of him as well, uh, because he was a, a glory champion as well. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, he's adapting very quickly to the MMA game. Yeah, good well, team. As well. Yeah, he definitely has a good team. I think with Teixeira in his corner, he. Mm -hmm. um, he has a bright future, I believe. Yeah. 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 Well, let's see what uh, what the, what his next fight will be. I mean, it will be against what is his name again? Uh, I don't know. They already announced the next fight. Well, not exactly, but I believe there's only one guy uh, that can fight for the title, and that's uh, Jiri Proaska, right? Okay, that will be an interesting fight because he's also um, more of a striker, although mm -hmm. he's good on the ground. But that will, and uh, he's also tall, so that will be a good fight. Mm -hmm. I, that would be a fight he could win, you know. That could be a fight he could win. 
Um, but I want to see uh, the UFC running this fight again. You know, this uh, Blachowicz versus uh, Pereira. Oh, second Hopefully, time? Second time. I want to see it. Maybe not right away, but eventually I want to see it. Not because I think it was a super exciting fight. So it's not going to be easy to do the re rematch because you want to sell a rematch. If the first fight was really exciting and it could go both ways, yeah, maybe you can. Uh, it's easier to run it down again. Uh, but uh, yeah, I want to see that fight again. See how he hands, handles uh, handles uh, uh, Blachowicz next time. Yeah, yeah, very, very curious how that will go. Um, but like you said, I, I'm not sure how, how they are going to sell this boring fight again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. I'm sure they will uh, announce it anytime soon. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the main fight. What do you think? Oh, yeah. no, first, who did you got uh, up front? Honestly, I really didn't know. Because those those two, yeah, they're both class acts. They're both hard hitters. Mm -hmm. They're both, like, super exciting. And they could finish a fight anytime, you know? Uh, so it could go both ways. What I expected is that it wouldn't go five rounds. And, and, and that's what happened, obviously. Um, what a fight. Like, they just keep... They just, like, I don't know. It's just amazing. They just kept throwing it at each other and uh, didn't back down both of them. So it's really, we. I think we spoke about it last time, the BMF title. What do you think about it? I mean, like, I think it's a fun, fun, uh, a, a fun title. Uh, we shouldn't take it too seriously in the sense of, okay, you know, and rankings, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I believe both of the, these guys deserve to fight to, for a BMF title. Yeah. Yeah. If, if two of the fighters de um, deserve it most, then it's definitely uh, Dustin and Justin because, um, yeah, you can sell out a pay-per-view when those guys are on the card. Um, okay, so you had no favor at uh, up front? No, 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 no because I, I like them both. They're both good fighters. They're both good strikers. Also both good wrestlers. Um, uh, you probably won't see him um, going for, uh, I don't know, for a slick arm bar and switching position and everything. They just want to go want to go for it and, like, knock each other out, you know. And, and yeah, it was like, I expected it to be fireworks and it was, you know. Yeah, it definitely was. What is it with Justin Gaethje being a wrestler, but somehow he is, it, uh, he, I don't know if you know that meme where he tries to go for the takedown and he all of a sudden makes that backflip. And uh, and and the meme is like uh, the caption is his body re uh, rejects or, uh, or uh, uh, refuses to wrestle uh, because he <laughs> makes it this backflip all of a sudden without any reason. So um, yeah, what is it with with Justin Gaethje not wrestling? Yeah, I mean that guy is such a good wrestler. He uses his wrestling to defend, you know, to uh -huh. defend the takedowns, but. Um... Yeah, he's not using it as an offense. Uh, so he's probably using it, but in a different way we would expect as him being one of the best wrestlers there in the division. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, he just likes to bang, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and in order to do so, he needs to have a good takedown defense. And that that's what he has because of his wrestling, you know? He's like, uh, yeah. I saw him going for the... Did you see him making a feint? Uh -huh. Going for the takedown? So that's it's, he's still a threat, you know. So so anybody who's fighting him, <clears throat> although he hardly wrestles, but everybody knows he can. So if one day he decides to bring the fight to the ground, he probably can, you know. So you still have to be still in your head. Like every time he makes that move down there, you're like, oh, wait, wait a minute, you know. If I'm on the bottom and he's on top swinging, yeah, it's also going to be a problem. So yeah, he, he still has that. Maybe he saves it for a later date. We never know, you know, but uh, he, he so, has that ability. So you would say it's more of a psychological weapon. Uh, no, than... it is, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never know. Yeah, very interesting. Um, up front, he said uh, something like, um, this is going to be a 50-50 fight. Do you agree with that? What's a 50-50 fight? What did, what did he mean by that? Like uh, the odds. 
um it's a 50 50 chance yeah, so that's why i couldn't choose you asked me uh who would have won i i, I don't know 50 50 both could have won he also is like that so and and even though he knows that he's still going to stand in front of him and bang you know so, although he, even himself he says could be 50 50 so and he's still not using his wrestling <laughs> <laughs> that's what like, he he's, does. A real, he's a real guy you know he's like a real man he's there and yeah, yeah. big balls and uh yeah great exactly. technique can take a lot of punishment as well. But, uh, yeah, I think you heard the commentary say that uh, I'm not sure about who they were talking, but they, one guy fought them both and he said that Gaethje, that hit, that guy hits so hard, it's like a next level, different impact. Poye also hits hard. He's slick, fast, good punches, like, like, a, like, a, like a good boxer, you know? He's like a solid boxer. But yeah. Gaethje is like... Uh, banging like every every time you get hit you're like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was talking to a friend earlier today and uh, i was saying that uh, they asked uh khabib they asked him who hits hardest oh, in the khabib, UFC. Right? yeah yeah and, and it was like uh justin justin gage he hits like truck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you, yeah, can see it. you can see it, you know, when he's throwing the punches, the impact it has on people. It's like, <laughs> although Poye can take a lot of punishment as well, you know, but still you saw him like, whoa. He was, he was definitely respecting uh, Gaethje's uh, punching power. And yeah. also Gaethje respected uh, Dustin's. Yeah, I like that. I like the, the Octagon interview of, of Justin as well. He's, he's so respectful. He's so... Yeah. But he's so dangerous. It's it's yeah. insane. It's insane. Yeah. He's definitely one of my favorite fighters. Um, I no, I I wanted to say I'd like to see some more technical groundwork, but no, I, I don't. That's not even true. <laughs> we don't even want to see it. <laughs> we no. want to fight, you know. <laughs> we just want to justify fight. But but I have to say that the 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 final technique was very that was a technical setup, you know, with the punch. Yeah punch kick mm -hmm. really cool. like the right punch right kick you want him he gave the punch made his move uh, head move the other way boom followed with a kick right away so i trained that a lot back in the days already when i was training with uh, uh lucien carbin uh mm -hmm. we practiced the te technique a lot both with left and with right uh you saw it with robert whitaker he does that a lot as well and then of course uh, they showed the clip i don't know if you saw it when uh, leon edwards knocked out uh who was it again Kamaru Usman. Yeah, Kamaru Usman with the same uh, with the same punch kick combination, and now uh, Gagey uh, start doing it. It's really effective, you know, especially if you set it up. So uh, in the same cage as well. Yeah, yeah. It was also in Salt Lake City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was destroying Dustin, but um, I'm I'm very happy that that Justin got more composed, and I think that's also partially or uh, contributed to uh, Trevor Whiteman. Whiteman? Whiteman is his name? His coach? Yeah. He's, uh, he's, what do you think of him as a coach? I mean, he's a colleague or a competitor? Yeah, he's, he's, he's good. He's there with the right people all the time and uh, he's doing great, great work with his fighters. So, uh, yeah, he's a good coach, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Somehow he, he looks a, a, to be able to... Um, to let his his fighters fight a more strategic fight. Yeah, yeah. I also liked uh, the fights of Kamaru Usman, yeah. and I believe he fought someone else. Uh, he trained someone else big as well. I cannot remember, but yeah. yeah um, somebody in the comments, Muso. That's also something I was uh, I wanted to ask. Do you think Gaethje has any chance against Oliveira or Mahachev? Personally. I don't think he won't be champ with those two in a division. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like striking wise, he could, he's, he's always a threat, you know? Um, and then, yeah, on the ground, you have to get him to the ground. His wrestling is still good. Uh, um, yeah, those two are really, really good. Of course, it's Makachev and uh, and uh, and Oliveira. I'm both. I'm also a big fan of Oliveira. You know, he did so many. He had so many fights and so many wins in a row. And all, always, people 
somehow kind of um, uh, underestimate him. I don't know why. Um, he's taller. He's more technical, I guess. So and maybe more. They're both very smart fighters. So with that, I can agree with Musso. Uh, they're very smart fighters. They're very uh, technical. A lot of experience and, and good fights. Well. But on the other hand, I will, I will always, I will never count Gaethje out. He always has a chance, you know. Um, yeah, because he's so dangerous in his striking and his wrestling is so good. So I will always, he will always have a chance. Uh, I. I wouldn't dare to say that he doesn't stand a chance when those two, uh, with those two guys. So, although the chances are maybe a little bit less, but still, you know, if he hits you, he hits you, <laughs> and you, you'll know, you'll know. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Standing, um, I think he will win of Mahachev. Yeah, easy, I think. But yeah, but when he when Mahachev takes it to the ground. It's going to be difficult. That, that stuff's so scary when he does it. I, yeah. I personally, I'm not a big fan of Mahachev because it's it's only ground game. Yeah. Um, but I, I think when they f they fight together, so Mahachev and Gaethje, eight out of ten times Mahachev will win. Even though I'm a bigger uh, Gaethje fan, mm -hmm. and I don't. Even though I think Mahachev is more dangerous, when Justin will find uh, will fight Oliveira, I don't think he will win. So, somehow I think Oliveira is um, too unpredictable. Very and, high fight IQ, yeah, IQ as well. Um, yeah. And and some the, the fire in Oliveira is is out of this world. He's he's so motivated, like he still has something to prove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is insane. So, w which fight would you like to see uh, more, Musso? That's also a question for you. Which fight do you want to see more, Oliveira? I would like. To, I prefer to see uh, Gagey versus uh, Mahachev because there he really has a chance. Uh, if you can keep the fight standing, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, but with Olivier, like you said, maybe Olivier is going to pick him apart. Pam, 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 punch, knee, long punches, knees, maybe a, a takedown here. I don't know. I, I'll. Although I believe that um, uh, Olivier versus uh, Gaethje might be more more interesting in terms of uh, entertainment. It's going to be a good fight, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The funny thing is, um, and it's what I just don't understand, don't understand yet, uh, because I think, obviously, when they are standing, I think uh, Mahachev will lose from Gaethje. But... His ground game is, is, is so dangerous. You almost know when he when Mahachev takes you to the ground, the game's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except when you're when you're called Volkanovsky. But that's what I uh, don't like at this moment in time in in the MMA. The fighters do not have a decent answer yet to the ground game of Mahachev. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of that? Is that something that will evolve? I believe at the end of the day, um, there will always be people who can figure you out. I mean, like um, a long time, Fedor was uh, nobody could touch him uh, until they did. You know, um, you had that with other fighters as well. Though GSP, I think he's the greatest of all time. So technical, so good, but still. They found a way to beat him. Later, he beat those guys again. But still, there's always a way. And MMA is, is so... You're walking on such a like a thin line. You could always easily go left or right, you know? And uh, the gloves are so small. Everybody's a professional. Everybody's a good fighter. Every Everybody punches hard or has slick submissions. Um, that's MMA. So eventually, and especially now... 
when they saw him against Volkanovski, who's a way smaller guy and uh, lighter as well. Uh, maybe now people see, okay, there's a... Let's study that fight over and over and over again, and maybe we'll find a, a good answer for uh, for Mahachev. So I don't believe he's going to be undefeated for uh, till the end of time. You know, eventually they'll uh... <laughs> go in. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> Rick I, hope, <laughs> I hope it will be anytime soon because um, even though I highly highly appreciate the ground game of uh, Islam, um, yeah. I'd like to see more diverse styles of fighting. So it's it's not only the ground game, but maybe I'm I'm a bit biased because I also like Pereira, and he's also not very <laughs> diverse in his uh, his fighting. I just like stand up game maybe a bit more. Um, Although when you saw the the last fight uh, in, in UFC 290 with uh, uh, the the semi last fight. There was a lot of ground game. From, but, uh, from who? Uh, the the, the co-main event. What was it again? Um, forgive me, I have a jet lag. Just came back from Jakarta. Okay. So, uh, wait, wait, wait. The, 90s, the, the second last fight. Um, Moreno the versus Pantoja. Yeah. yeah so, okay, there okay. was a lot of ground yeah. game. But that was exciting. That, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. That was, that was. But uh, that was also very diverse, right? Because yeah, they also diverse. stand and bank yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's also that, that is what I like the most about uh, about MMA is when they when they mix it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So Muso said this. I like to see Mahachev because of the history with Khabib. Uh, does he mean? Uh, does that? Does he refer to? Okay, Muso. Maybe you can explain yourself a bit more. Um, do you refer to the fact that? Gagey fought Khabib. I don't. I do not remember how that went. Obviously, he's like he's like, a, he's like the new Khabib, maybe Mahachev. I mean, like his same camp, yeah, same kind of fighting style. Although Khabib was more also mixing it up in striking. Um, At the beginning, it was really bad at striking, right? Yeah, when, yeah, he, yeah. when he started, I don't think he's a super good striker, but he. He knew enough to uh, to pressure his opponents and then go for the takedown. Yeah. So yeah, maybe exactly. Yeah. yeah, it could be. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm rooting for uh, for Justin because for me, he's, he's some sort of a fan fav favorite. Um, he fought Khabib yet. And he trashed Mahachev in interview saying he's not as good as Khabib. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, let's see. But, um, but uh, so he fought Khabib, yes, and he trashed Mahachev in interview saying he's not as good as Khabib. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> but I, I, I also believe Mahachev is not as good as Khabib. <laughs> I believe that's true. <laughs> this is going to be a clip. <laughs> <and> we will. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to clip this and uh <laughs> replay this on TikTok. <laughs> Martin de Jong trashes Mahachev. <laughs> no, I don't think it's trash. I mean that's more respect to uh, more respect to Khabib, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah oh, no, I, I agree. Th there people are still talking about Khabib uh, and he he still um is involved in the discussion when it comes to goat discussion and i think that reason alone that people are still discussing him is a reason to yeah. uh, consider him as one of one of the greatest yeah. um okay so we, uh, we'll see um i don't know when oliver and mahachev will fight i believe it's in abu dhabi right yeah i think so yeah i don't know it will be later this year um i'm Totally rooting for uh, Oliveira, but uh, we'll see. Um, to look at the next card, 292. No, wait. There's a fight next week that's not on a pay-per-view, but it's, there's a fight that I want to uh, um, want to discuss because I'm, I'm a fan of him. Corey Sandhagen versus Rob Font, and I'm a fan of Corey Sandhagen. 
What do you think yeah. of him? Yeah, I like Corey Sanhagen as well. Very all round, very exciting. Um, yeah, he's um, yeah, I like him. He's a good fighter. Do you think he's he there is for a while to be a champion? Ooh. Um, I think maybe, but not anytime. I'm um, not anytime soon. He's he's been there for a while. I mean, like. Uh, but um, this is, uh, let me see, what weight class is this? Uh, this is catch weight, by the way. Yeah, because he uh, was supposed to fight Umar Nurmagomedov. I'm glad that that's not happening, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a really bad choice of him, in my opinion, because he's not even ranked, I believe, Nurmagomedov. Yeah. And Regarding his name, when you look at his name, <laughs> I think it is a bad, bad idea to to fight him. But uh, he just he just wanted to. He just accepted it. But now he's uh, fighting Rob Font. Is Rob Font heavier or? Let me see. Uh, usually they're fighting bantamweight. Uh, Font. Oh, uh, same weight. That's I don't know why they do it. Maybe because of a it was the last minute replacement. Uh huh. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's that's why. Maybe and he's uh, okay. like something in his rank number four right now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like he's up there probably with the title contenders, but um, I think not not yet. Um, yeah. He's thirty one. He's quite quite young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see how he does this time. Uh, who's who's above him? Do you know? Let me check. Ben Wade, you said? Okay, yeah. we're going to improvise. We have to keep talking and while I'm looking at the statistics. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to uh, ask your opinion first. I will, I will look it up. Uh, who do you think who will win? Corey Sandhagen or Rob, whoa, Rob Font? Um, I'm still rooting for Corey Sandhagen. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think so. I think so. Although that guy Rob Font is a really good guy. He's uh, he's dangerous, you know. Mm -hmm. I yeah. agree. Yeah, he's dangerous. Let me uh, let me see. He's also I don't know how many. Oh, only Henry Cejudo, Sean O'Malley, Merab Dvashvili. I am not sure if I pronounced his name correctly. And Aljamain Sterling are in front of him. Yeah. And Rob Font is number seven ranked. Oh, that's that's quite high. I thought yeah. he was lower. No, 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 no. Yeah, I believe that um, um, those those guys you just mentioned are. Although, yeah, the Sean O'Malley, yeah, he, he's a nice guy. He's a good. He sells himself very well. But I'm still not a, as big of a fan, maybe as other people. Because I think his fighting style is still okay, but not really like top contender. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. If he keeps winning, yeah, that's good for him, you know. Um, the other guys, Aljamain Sterling, not easy to beat, you know, So for, for St. Hagen. So I'm not sure if he's going to be fighting for a title anytime soon. And if he does, uh, if he has a big chance of winning. So, but that's my opinion. Yeah, I think, no, I think so too. Um, he already lost to Sterling, but yeah, he, I think. Sandhagen massively improved in the last couple of fights. Yeah, yeah. The way he fought, I think it was against Vera. Yeah. Was very dominant and like like a true martial artist. He he punches, uh, level changes, ground game. Uh, um and he switched it up so easily. Um it made Vera look like he was off that day, but yeah. I thought Sandhagen was so dominant that that uh, Vera didn't stand a chance. While well, Vera is a good fighter as well, yeah, he's, he's sure, number sure. six for a reason. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, I'm very happy to see him fight next week. Um, and before we go to the last topic, I think this is somebody coming from you, Nimrod Ortason. Do you know him? No. What's next for Ferguson? We already <coughs> touched a little on Ferguson, but what's next for him? 
I uh, think you should stop. What do you think? Uh, retirement, yes. <laughs> you think so? Uh, I don't know. I hope so. And some unranked fighters, maybe? Or is that yeah, more, what? Uh, just to make money than... or just to entertain us or for what? You know, I mean, he has no chance of winning the title anymore. Mm -hmm. um, he has a, there's a big possibility that he can give us some very entertaining fights. Mm -hmm. But do we really want to see that, you know? And also in, in terms of looking at his mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, or physical health. Uh, but he so, wants to uh, fight so badly still. I don't think he should do it, but... Chuck Liddell yeah. as well, you know? Chuck Liddell really wanted to fight so badly every time. <laughs> uh, but Dana White pulled the plug there as well. I mean, like, sometimes you have to do what's right, what's smart, not what's what the fighter wants or what the um, audience wants. For his own good, I believe it's better to stop now. I agree. Is it's he, not like that. He's a fighter that never gets touched and sometimes take a punch as one or two, but he's really getting a lot of damage. And because he's so tough, it just keeps going. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Um, do you think he's a Hall of Famer? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yes. Yeah. yeah could be. Yeah, it's... It, it's it's difficult because they also said Gironi was also a Hall of Famer. You, you, you cannot give that title to everybody who has just fought a really long time, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Okay, so we are going to the last topic. Predictions for UFC 292. I just fire some names and you tell me who's going to win, Okay. okay. Marlon Vera versus Pedro Munoz. Mm. Wow, yeah. Um, let me see. That's going to be a. That's going to be a good fight. Um, I like. Yeah, I like Vera as well. Uh, Vera Munoz, yeah. Um, Pedro Munoz is also very, very skilled. I don't know, very hard to say. Maybe Marlon Vera. Yeah? Or them, yeah. I like him as a fighter. Yeah. Okay. I'm noting that. No, we, I will rewatch this and uh, make a post out of it. That's better. <laughs> Co <laughs> Cody Garbrandt versus Mario Batista. I don't know that guy, to be honest. No, I also don't know him. And I was always a big fan of, of Cody. Um... But sometimes he's, I mean, he's always doing so well. And then all of a sudden he get caught, you know. Uh, I don't know what's, what, what's wrong with him. I mean, like, um, in the beginning it was so dominant when it just came up, when he was with Alpha Mill. Um, I saw him as a real big thing then. I mean, like, he has the potential to become real, real big. Um, I don't know if it has to do with his attitude or maybe with his, uh, I don't know. Sometimes a little bit arrogant, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I, he could have been a huge star, but then on like in, in crucial times he he lost the fight and uh, I don't know. I, I always when he fights he's also he he's always very dominant. He has definitely like crazy skill set, uh, good stamina as well. But you never know. I, I <laughs> if you I, for me it's not very difficult to put some money on him. You know, so I don't know. Although I don't, yeah, I'm, I didn't see a lot of fighters, Mario Batista. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, Cody, I like him. He's a good fighter, has a lot of potential, um, uh, good skill good skill set, good stamina. Um, although, yeah, you never know. If you get hit, he, he, yeah, sometimes he's out there all of a sudden. <clears throat> How old is he? 90, 91? Oh, he's not yeah. that old. No, he's not that old. Hmm. Because I look at his record and he won his first six fights, which mm -hmm. is quite impressive, of course. But then yeah. he lost to Dillashaw two times. Yeah. It's not a shame. Dillashaw was, was a top contender, of course. Then yeah. he lost to Munoz. Then he won to somebody I don't know, Rafael <laughs> Asunchao. Asunchao, I don't know. Uh, then he lost to Rob Font, Rob Font, and to Kai Kara France. Also a good fighter. Um, but it seems like he just is not able to win from the like top 10. No, not back-to-back -back anymore. 
Yeah. Exactly. And he also <laughs> did not fight. No problem. Cheers. He, he, uh, he also did not fight really much, like mm -hmm. 10 times in the last eight years. Yeah. yeah. That's not a lot. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Okay. So, okay. Um, when it comes to this, uh, reading this, I will not put my money on Cody Garbrandt. <laughs> my <laughs> lot decided <laughs> for me. <laughs> And then we have another fight. I don't know them either. Joff Neal versus... Oh, Ian Gary. Ian Gary. I know Ian Gary. I'm putting my money on Ian Gary. It's a new Irish guy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's exciting. Uh, I yeah. mean, like... Uh, but he's, uh, he's uh, ranked number 14. Joff Neal, 8. Um, but he's definitely so potential, this new uh, Irish guy. He's uh, he can make some waves, so let's see how that goes. Would be nice if we could win this fight again. A new Irish guy, so uh, yeah, let's put yeah. our money on Ian Gary. Yeah, and then he's still undefeated, right? So he's still 12 and 0. So he has, yeah. um, yeah. and he's young, so he's young. exciting, yeah, exactly. Uh, very strong. I think he in his last fight he said, I'm going to knock him out with a head kick. And he kicked him out with a he knocked him out with a head kick. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's some Irish uh, <laughs> magic happening there. <laughs> um, next up is Zhang Wei Li versus Amanda Limos. I only know Zhang Wei Li, uh, to be honest. Yeah. yeah uh, what yeah. do you think? <laughs> uh, I believe that um, yeah, I like Zhang Li, uh, Wei Li as well. I like her. She's uh, as he keeps improving. You know. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that yeah, MMA was is kind of new in, in in China as well. Um, of course, they've been there for a couple of years, but you still see a lot of uh, San Chao or uh, fighters, you know, transitioning to mixed martial arts, which is good. And uh, I think she still she keeps getting better. And I liked her from the start. Very explosive, good base, uh, striking, yeah, good, solid. Uh, groundwork improving, ever improving. So I'll, I'll, I'll like to see her win. I like to see her win. Yeah, I think so too. I think she will win. And then the main uh, event with your favorite fighter, Sean O'Malley versus Aljamain Sterling. Yeah, I go with Aljamain on this one. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think. I think he's, be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he's so so quick. He he rose so quick. The Sean O'Malley. Um, he knows how to sell himself. He's a good fighter. Very um, um, fast eye. He 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 processes information very very fast. Uh, but I don't believe he stands a chance against uh, El Jermaine. El Jermaine is too good. Uh, tall, good strikes, uh, crazy wrestling. You know. Amazing ground control. I don't believe um, uh, Sean O'Malley stands a chance. That's a fight I want to put my money on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious because Al Jermaine um, is, of course, the champ. Won a lot of fights. But there's still something on his record that because of the Peter Jan fight, because yeah, of yeah. the uh, um, TJ Dillashaw fight, and still... People are doubting him a little bit, and I just hope that he will fight. Even when he fights O'Malley, he he will still get critique for it. Yeah, and I think that's a shame because I think he's a really good fighter. Yeah, uh, and I think he will. He he deserves more credit. Oh, this is an interesting take, and I think we will take that as a final take for this fight talk. Sean O'Malley will have a. Connor Aldo moment with Algerman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that would be something. I mean, like, uh, if that would happen, yeah, you can make a lot of money if you bet on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. We should, uh, we should check the odds for that, uh, for that bet. <laughs> that would be very spectacular. But I think it, it would be very entertaining. But it would be a shame for the division, I guess, if. If Sean O'Malley would be a champion, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If he wins, he wins. But um, yeah, let's see. Let's see if they. Uh, let's see after three rounds. You know, if they if it if they will make it to three rounds, I believe it will. 
but um, uh, let's see how he handles himself then. So, um, but yeah. that that would be so. Algermain is has a weird record for, somehow, and um, O'Malley has the same. And then you have two guys at the top of this division who are the champion or who are top contenders, and they both are. And I don't know the word in English, but the opposite of undisputed. They are still being critiqued for the way they got there. And I think that's that's just pity. Yeah, I think with uh, uh, Sterling, I also didn't like how he won against Peter Young back then with his uh, knee, you know, uh, controversial knee, how he let himself count out. Um, but still, he's been very solid, you know. He's been very mm -hmm. solid. Yeah. And against Cejudo, yeah, yeah. And Cejudo is not a bad fighter. And I really believe that uh, that he won, you know. I really believe that uh, that uh, Sterling won, although it was close. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll I'll definitely give it to Sterling. And uh, I see uh, Sean O'Malley not being on the level of Cejudo. Uh, no, not at all. Cejudo, Cejudo was out for a while, but still. He, I believe that's a different level. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I just and I will wrap up after this. But um, he won from Peter Jan in a weird way. Uh, then he won from Dillashaw, who turns out that he had a dislocated shoulder his yeah. whole training camp. And then he won from Cejudo, who was like retired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now he's fighting Sean O'Malley. So I yeah. still think he has. He's he's great. But yeah, we we'll, we have to see um, how his career will continue. Okay, um, predictions for next time. We had them. We had a great card today. And is there something else you want to say about the current card or the next card or future fights? No, I think we said it all. Uh, it's going to be a great card to look out for. Uh, I mean, like UFC is getting better and better every week. There, even if it's a big card or a smaller card, the, the the fights are always exciting. I'm happy, you know, to see that the UFC and MMA is growing so fast now. Uh, especially with the, I don't know if that's going to happen. It's going to be crazy. The UFC 300, Zuckerberg versus uh, Musk. If that's <laughs> going to happen, uh, it's more of a freak fight, maybe. But still, if they, uh, they I believe that they're both really training. Um, if that's going to happen, the whole world will be watching. Will be any pay per view ever on the planet Earth. Um, but uh, there's going to be a big push for MMA as well. Uh, uh, only the fact that people are talking about it already, you know. Yeah. So uh, MMA is growing. I'm happy to see that. Um, yeah, it's going to be more and more and more mainstream in the coming years. So I'm happy that uh, you see that such a, such a great job uh, alongside with Bellator and PFL. So. Um, that's only good for the sport. Every week, exciting events, and I'm happy. I totally agree. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank everybody for listening. Thanks for all the comments. We really appreciate it. Uh, it makes the conversation um, more dynamic. And Martijn, I want to thank you for your time. Have a great Sunday. And until next time, everybody, have a great, a great Sunday. See you guys. Bye-bye.